It's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to make another phase one interceptive ortho video. And by phase one interceptive, I mean early treatment. It's not comprehensive treatment, it's done on younger kids. Usually phase one is age seven to nine. However, today we're going to be talking about pre-phase one or early, early intervention. And this is not really a thing. This is what I call it. Um, it's a bit different than what is tradi traditionally done, at least in the US, in orthodontics. And it's not even something we learned at all about in orthodontic residency. It's something that I kind of fell upon, a little bit edgy, a little bit different, only because perhaps the area where I was practicing, which was West Coast, um, there tends to be a little bit more um, open-minded people asking for alternative therapies, maybe not wanting things like surgeries or premolar extractions, people concerned about airways. And a lot of people are very aware of aberrant growth, both parents, physicians, and um, you know the medical and dental community in general. So let's talk about what we can see. I'm just assuming this patient, this is not my patient, this is a stock image that I bought but it's always the best because I like to be open-minded with what I see. And it's a great way for me to point things out and educate you what I see. So looking at this patient, what I wanted to show you is that you can take an average four or five, four or five year old, guessing this patient is four or five, most likely, maybe even six, um, and could be as young as three. And you could just grab one picture. You don't have to take impressions. You don't have to have the whole series of ortho photos with mirrors. You don't even have to have a panoramic x-ray. I don't care in a patient this young, you know? But what I want you to do is to start screening your two, three, four, five, and six-year-olds. If you are a general dentist or if you are a pediatric dentist, I want you to start to screen them every single two through six-year-old in your practice. Why? I want you to look for things that are correctable. Now, obviously the severe situations, there's gonna be some, it might be 5%, 10% in your practice. Maybe you'll be treat them, maybe you'll refer them out. There's problem with orthodontists is that we tend to kind of stuck in our ways. And I'll be honest, I was one of those where if the patient wasn't seven, you know, I'm not saying I do this now, but if the patient wasn't at least seven, I would say, oh, it's too early. You know, tell them to reschedule if I see a five-year-old or a four-year-old on my practice schedule, which now I realize is a huge mistake because I didn't even realize that there were ways, that there was interventions that you could do this young. Now, the other issue is that you cannot bill insurance for the most of the most of the time. Insurance is not going to pay for this. So a lot of parents come in just assuming insurance is going to pay for it. Well, they're not. So very rarely. You can try. Sometimes if there's an active habit or space maintainer issue, then you could bill that. So for habit intervention, there is a code for that. It's a removable appliance. I think it's D8210. Fix might be D8220. I might be flipping those. Those sometimes insurance will cover if there is an oral habit like thumb sucking, pacifier use. But I strongly recommend that you get that pre-authorized because a lot of times it just doesn't get paid for. Also, you are using the patient's orthodontic coverage, which often has, you know, a max of 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, um, If you're using it at age three or four, you might exhaust it and they may not realize they're going to have to pay in full for their braces later. And sometimes we need two phases of braces. This is like a pre-phase. This basically turns the ortho into three stages or three phases. That means the patient's going to have to pay three times. So if you use the insurance now, whether it get exhausted all or not, you're not going to have it later and that can get parents very upset. I'm just warning you about that. So I strongly recommend if you if you even if you are able to get it covered that you almost you know have the parents sign that they realize they're exhausting their insurance benefits and that they will need additional treatment later so that is the risk that they take but i've just seen it you know fly in my face before when you know even i've done phase one so now i have a, something called a phase one consent form and this is even before that this is like pre-orthodontic you know this is early phase one so no guarantee if you start things now that you're not gonna have to have two more phases later, phase one and phase and comprehensive or phase two later. So just wanted to say that. Okay, so what do I see here? Let's get back to this. And this is not, obviously like I mentioned, there's gonna be five or 10% that have severe issues. I'm talking about over jets more than eight to 10 millimeters. Um, I'm talking about severe crowding, you know? 
in um, just constrictive arches, vaulted arches, skeletal malformations. Basically, you're talking about skeletal malformations, severe ones. Those are going to need a little bit more than what I'm talking about. You're going to have to get a little more aggressive with your treatment. This is a minor issue, but remember, I love to tell you when I love to play like a party game. <laughs> this is like an orthodontic nerd party game, but you know, on cousins and, and family members and stuff when you go to parties, people always come up, hey, can you take a look at my kid? And sometimes they're two, three, you know, I can predict the future most of the most of the time as to what this patient's gonna look like when they're 13, what their teeth, are they gonna need braces, are they gonna need one phase, are they gonna need two phase, are they gonna need three phases? And I think it's a really great thing for you to prepare the parents for because they don't know, right? So they're looking at this, they may think, oh, this is totally normal, but it's not. Okay, so what do I see here that concerns me? Uh, first of all, the main thing that concerns me is the deep bite, okay? Remember, deep bites will always get worse. They do not get better, okay? This is something that always gets worse over time. So it is something that needs, that must be treated. Now, if you've heard me talk about deep bites before, I'm probably repeating myself, but I wanna tell you a personal story because it's a, there's a reason why this is so important to me. So deep bites run in my family or vertical issues, um, as do diastemas, as you can see here. So this is probably what, matter of fact, I can show you pictures of me, you know, smiling. This is basically what I look like. And I was always, there was no crowding, you know, there wasn't any major malocclusion, major constriction, anything like that. It was just a deep bite <laughs> was my, so I went all through, you know, and a diastema, but that was considered cosmetic at the time. So you know, my parents, it's not that finances were a huge issue, but they were told by every pediatric dentist and even orthodontist, I believe. Yes, orthodontist, um, that it wasn't necessary for me to have orthodontics, even though I really, really wanted it, like from age eight on, begged my parents for it. But what was actually happening is that because of my deep bite, which kept getting worse, the bottom teeth are hitting the roof of the mouth and they're biting up on the gum of the top of eight and nine or the upper ones and causing um, bone loss, causing tissue trauma. It's very uncomfortable. And over time it gets worse and you actually damage the roots to those teeth, those permanent teeth. So once I get to be about 17, finally an orthodontist who is a friend of the family is like, whoa, this is bad. You know, she needs to come in and get started. Well, by then I was going to college. I was not happy about this, you know? So it was not fun. And I was, I was angry, to be honest, that I should have had this treated when I was younger. So I just want to point this out. This deep bite will get worse. You can spot it on a two, three, four, five year old, and you can definitely get started with treatment. There are options from a variety of different companies. And if you watch my phase one playlist from my YouTube channel, which is not YouTube in general, but if you go to YouTube and put in straight smile solutions in the search bar, you'll get my YouTube channel. And you might be on it right now if you're watching this. And then you scroll down on the homepage and there's playlists, right? Well, you click the playlist button and I have to think about 12 playlists and one of them is phase one interceptive. Watch that playlist, click through the stuff that interests you because we go into all these different appliances that are out there. There are many different companies that sell appliances. Price point in the US starts at about $42 an appliance and they're not expensive. It's something that could be very affordable. What do dentists charge? That is the price to the dentist. So obviously that's for the appliance itself. It is a class two medical device. It isn't something you can purchase as a parent yourself. Um, the great news is you don't have to take impressions or molds or scans. These are stock. So they come in a couple different sizes, but there's a size for a two to four year old. There's a size to a four to six year old, except, etc. cetera. Um, some of them, the, some of the companies have warranties. If you have a bite through some don't. So for the doctor, you need to keep that in mind because some of the companies, the products aren't as good of quality as other products. Some come with warranties, some don't. So ultimately, I think you have to figure your lab fee is going to be more like about 150 when all's done. If you use a more expensive company or use a cheaper company named multiple appliances. But regardless, some of the companies are going to require you to take a course. Some are going to require you to do memberships. Some don't. So watch all my videos. I'm not going to promote any because I really don't care what you use. The ultimate thing is that you're using one and taking care of these kiddos that should be taken care of. So again, these appliances, they're only worn at night and when home. I recommend four hours a day when home. It can take some time to get used to them. You don't have to be stressed out, you know. I usually recommend you get started initially by wearing this. It's just, we call it a tooth pillow, you know, and, and 
It also can be used to help to reduce thumb sucking or pacifier sucking or other issues, other oral habits, you know, finger biting, things like that. They start off using it while they watch a cartoon, then they proceed to a movie, then they proceed to trying to wear it maybe during books, you know. Um, they can use it during gaming, things like that, and then they start wearing it at nighttime. And it might fall out initially, or it might even come fall out for the next few months. My daughter had one. I remember it would fall out. If I, when I go put her to bed, you know, if it was out later, when I went to bed, I would just plunk it back in her mouth. It was really easy. And she, you know, she'd take it and someone she, when she woke up in the morning, it would be missing, it would be in the sheet somewhere and we'd usually find it. Um, sometimes it would stay in and, and when we did, you know, there'd be a sticker or a reward, you know, we'd celebrate that. But ultimately it takes time. These are a marathon, not a sprint. So you're going to have to wear them for at least a year or two, you know, every night, as well as a few hours during the day, they don't need to wear it at school. And over time, the bite will improve. Over jets, over bites, cross bites, a lot of stuff, real passively, real slow, but it can really help a more severe case get an, get an age, you know, a leg up, which will prevent more severe orthodontic issues later. And it also can improve airway, it can improve the way they feel, the way they breathe. There's a lot of other positive benefits that come from using these appliances because you are getting the bite the right size and shape that it should be so the patients can breathe and sleep well at night. And it also eliminates a lot of habits which can cause misshaping of the arches and of the mouth and of the face. So hopefully that was helpful. So the answer would be yes, I would go ahead and start this patient now, or at least I give the parents an option. Like I said, pull out that crystal ball, let them know what to expect. I would tell a patient like this. Um, I mean, obviously I can't really see the sides, but you know, for the most part, Patient's probably a little bit class 2-y, div 2-y, tiny bit class 2, deep bite. I would tell the parents, you know, um, she'll probably have that gap when she gets older. That's not a medical problem, but the deep bite is a medical problem. We're going to have to correct it with either braces or aligners, or we can get started right now earlier and get the harder problems out of the way, you know, and then later it might not be a big deal that we maybe don't even have to do braces or aligners later. Maybe. Can't make promises. All I can tell you is it's only going to help. You know, whether it helps 10, 20, 50, 100%, not sure. You know, everybody reacts differently. And a lot of parents are willing to invest a couple hundred dollars, you know, out of pocket into helping their kid look better, feel better. What's, what's the risk? There's really no risk. So not all parents will do it, but at least you've created awareness. Let them know that there is a problem, that they definitely want to keep their ortho insurance. And they're probably going to want to have anything like this is going to want to have at least a phase one when they're seven, eight or nine. So if you don't get started now. All right. Thanks so much.